So I recently came across a free AI video generator that allows you to create unlimited video clips. And the video generations can be pretty quick as well, depending on how many other people are using it. So I did a quick test prompt and I was really surprised how good the results were. So I decided to see if I could make an eight to 10 minute story using only AI tools. And my only challenge was all the tools must be free to use and so that anybody can have a go at it. So to start with, I went to good old ChatGPT and used a plugin GPT tool called Write For Me GPT. I then decided on a creepy and mysterious theme. So I asked it to write a 1000 word short story based upon a mysterious light coming from an abandoned restaurant near the coast. I then created a free account over at Eleven Labs where you get 10,000 free credits, which I found is good enough for about one to two stories depending on the length. I then copied the story from ChatGPT and pasted it into Eleven Labs to generate the voiceover. I then downloaded the voice and opened up DaVinci Resolve, which is a free video editor, but you could also use something like CapCut, which is also free. I then dragged the voice over onto the timeline and then made up some prompts to try and visualize the story in the AI video generator. I then just downloaded these clips and dropped them into the timeline. Now the AI video generations don't always come out as you'd expect, so you might have to have a go at it a few times and try and rewrite the prompts to get what you, what you want. I then added some black bars to get rid of the watermark and make it more cinematic. So it was all coming together quite nicely, but I found it was a bit soulless just having a voiceover with some visuals. So then I went to the free YouTube audio library and looked for some suitable sound effects and some music. This can take a bit of time to, to get something that fits the story that you're trying to create. And the sound effects are pretty limited. So you might have to use your imagination with a few. I'll put links to everything that I've used in the description below. And before I show you the final result, if you um, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you've got any queries, then just let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Oh, and I should say that the story is called The Glow at Solace Cove. The wind howled as Sam gripped the steering wheel, squinting through the rain that lashed against the windshield. He was exhausted, having driven for hours along the coast to find this place. Solace Cove, a once thriving fishing village, had been abandoned for over two decades, ever since a violent storm had wrecked most of the harbor and driven away the few residents. Now, it was just a ghost town, except for the light. Sam had read about the light online. Every few months, reports surfaced of a glowing beacon shining from the windows of the old restaurant perched at the end of the pier. The restaurant, Neptune's Table, was notorious in its own right, having closed years before the village was abandoned. Its owners had vanished under strange circumstances, leaving behind an eerie legacy of unanswered questions. When Sam first heard the stories, he dismissed them as urban legend. But when the strange light was caught on camera by a group of thrill-seeking teens, curiosity got the better of him. Now, here he was, in the dead of night, driving through a storm to see for himself. The car's headlights swept over the dilapidated Welcome to Solace Cove sign, its paint peeling and weathered. The village beyond was a cluster of dark, empty buildings, their windows black and hollow like eyes that had seen too much and said nothing. Sam parked at the edge of the pier and stepped out into the rain. He could hear the sea crashing violently against the shore, the sound mixing with the whistling wind. The air smelled of salt and decay. He grabbed his flashlight and walked towards Neptune's table. The pier creaked beneath his boots, and he swore he could feel the wood sagging under his weight. The restaurant loomed ahead, a dark silhouette against the stormy sky. The windows were grimy, the once bright sign now faded to nothing. The building had been boarded up long ago, yet as Sam drew closer, he saw it. A faint, unnatural light emanating from inside. He stopped in his tracks, suddenly unsure if he really wanted to know what was inside. But the pull of the mystery was stronger than his fear. Sam approached the front door and tested the handle. It was locked, but the wood was old and rotted. A firm push, and the door gave way with a groan, swinging open to reveal a dimly lit interior. 
the smell hit him first. A rancid mix of mildew, salt water, and something else. Something metallic. Blood? The thought sent a chill down his spine. The light seemed to be coming from deeper inside the building, flickering like a candle but more intense, almost like the glow of a lantern submerged underwater. He stepped inside, the floorboards creaking ominously beneath him. His flashlight swept over overturned chairs and tables covered in dust. Everything looked untouched, as though the place had been frozen in time the night it closed. He moved deeper into the restaurant, following the light. It pulsed in a steady rhythm, growing brighter as he approached the kitchen door. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up. Sam hesitated, his hand resting on the doorknob. He could hear something now, a faint whispering sound, barely audible over the storm outside. It was like the wind was carrying voices, old and distant, but insistent. Swallowing his fear, Sam turned the knob and pushed the door open. The kitchen was bathed in an eerie blue glow. At the center of the room stood a large, rusted sink, and above it, suspended in the air, was the source of the light. It wasn't a lantern or a bulb, but a shimmering orb, translucent and fluid, like a bubble filled with glowing water. It hovered there, pulsating softly, casting strange twisting shadows on the walls. Sam felt his breath catch in his throat. What was this thing? As he stared, the orb seemed to shift, rippling as though sensing his presence. The whispers grew louder, more distinct now. Sam could make out fragmented words, pleas for help, cries of anguish, faint echoes of terror. His pulse quickened. He backed away slowly, but his foot hit something solid. He glanced down, his flashlight revealing the source of the metallic smell. Blood. It was dried and smeared across the floor, trailing towards the sink. His heart pounded in his chest as he looked closer. The sink was filled with water, black and stagnant, yet swirling as though something was moving beneath the surface. The orb pulsed brighter, and the whispers became a cacophony, a rising wail of voices all crying out at once. Sam felt a wave of dizziness wash over him. He staggered back, trying to distance himself from the light, from the voices, but it was too late. The kitchen door slammed shut behind him with a deafening bang. Sam whipped around, his flashlight flickering. He rushed to the door, yanking at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The light from the orb grew brighter, filling the room with a harsh, unnatural glow. The whispers turned into screams, agonized, desperate cries. Sam's skin prickled with fear, and he spun back towards the orb, which was now expanding, stretching across the room like some living thing. He heard splashing behind him, and his blood ran cold. Slowly he turned towards the sink. The water had started to bubble, rising up over the edges, spilling onto the floor. Something was moving in the dark water, something large, its shape impossible to make out. Sam's flashlight flickered again, then died completely, plunging him into total darkness, save for the glow of the orb. The whispers were no longer distant. They were inside his head now, loud and invasive, as though something was clawing its way into his mind. He stumbled backward, his breath coming in short, panicked gasps. The water continued to rise, creeping across the floor toward him, carrying with it a foul stench of decay. And then he saw them, figures in the water, their faces pale and bloated, their mouths open in silent screams. They reached for him with skeletal hands, their eyes glowing with the same unnatural light as the orb. Sam screamed, scrambling to get away. But the figures kept coming, their hands grasping at his legs, dragging him down toward the water. He fought, kicking and thrashing, but their grip was unbreakable. The light from the orb grew blinding, filling the entire room with a searing brightness. The last thing Sam heard before the water engulfed him was the sound of his own voice, 
joining the chorus of whispers. The next morning, the light was gone, and the restaurant stood as silent as ever. No one would ever know what happened to Sam. Only the sea, the storm, and the whispers of Solace Cove could tell that tale. <laughs> 